This is the Commander's Beacon. I'm Eric. I'm here to talk about some unconventional ways to build Commander decks, and today we're talking about Shadrick's Silver Quill. Again. So, during Strixhaven spoilers, I released a video previewing Shadrick's Silver Quill. I talked about a few ways that you might build around Shadrick's, uh, but since then I've really liked this commander so much that I've decided to give Shadrick's a second video. This time it's a dedicated deck tech. Uh, but in case you missed that spoiler video, or in case you missed the Strixhaven spoilers in general, what in the world is a Shadrick's Silver Quill? It kind of sounds like a dumb 1980s sitcom. Well, if Strixhaven had TVs, Shadrix would very likely have his own show. But instead, the Strixhaven College recites poetry with feeling, in black hoodies and poorly lit rooms, all to demonstrate their unrequited love for Daddy Shadrix. Anyways, Shadrix is a 2-5 Elder Dragon. It costs 3 white black. It has flying and double strike. It has haikus you cast, cost one less to... Oh, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm done with the poetry jokes now. It has, at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may choose two. Each mode must target a different player. Target player creates a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. Target player draws a card and loses one life. Target player puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature they control. So I'm not going to spend too much time today reviewing this triggered ability. Uh, you can see my Shadrick Silver Quill spoiler video for my thoughts on that if you're interested. I will just briefly reiterate here though uh, that I really think that to take advantage of what Shadrick does, you'll want to have a mode that you can pick for yourself that you can really take advantage of, and you'll want to have a mode that you can pick for an opponent that you can really take advantage of. Even though you're giving your opponent something, you really want to be benefiting from it. So let's go over our deck strategy by talking about how we'll pick our ability triggers for Shadrix. Uh, first, which of Shadrix's triggered modes do we want to pick for ourselves most of the time? I chose to build around picking target player draws a card and loses one life. Uh, this isn't exciting. There's not really any card draw synergy that goes with this. Drawing cards by itself is good enough. This is an Orzov commander with reliable card draw on it. Shadrix can draw us one extra card every turn for no investment other than casting our commander and it's starting the turn it comes into play. Again, that's really good all by itself. Uh, compare Shadrix, for example, to one of the only other Orzov commanders with card draw on it, uh, Furia Judge of Valor, and you'll see that the card draw advantage that Shadrix provides is clearly superior. Now, when it comes to picking a mode for an opponent, you can always try to be political, and this is fun, but it's not reliable. So I've built this deck around choosing the mode, target player creates a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying, and I pick that for an opponent. And I've decided to call this deck, Shadrix Hates Life. And he'll tell you why in 28 gripping verses. Okay, okay, this time I'm done with the poetry jokes. Now, in this case, Shadrix hates life because our deck is built to decimate creatures. Ideally, we want those 2-1 flying tokens that we generate for our opponents to die the moment they hit the battlefield. And even more so, we want to punish our opponents when it happens. So with that introduction out of the way, let's talk about what's in this deck. So the first thing we want to do with Shadrix is make sure that all those 2-1 Inkling creature tokens that we give away never have a chance to attack or block or even be sacrificed by our opponents for value. Illness in the ranks is an enchantment that costs black and gives all creature tokens minus one minus one. Perfect. Virulent Plague does the same, but it costs more. It costs two and a black and it gives all creature tokens minus two minus two. There's Engineered Plague, which also costs two and a black. And when it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type, you'll probably pick Inkling. Uh, creatures of the chosen type get minus one, minus one. A Plague Engineer does the same thing at the same cost, but it's on a vulnerable 2-2 two -two body. But we need the effect, so we'll take it. A Knight of Souls Betrayal gives all creatures minus one, minus one, including our own. Uh, be aware that we do have a few creatures in the deck other than Shadrix, uh, 11 of them to be exact. 
and some of them have one toughness, so you probably won't want to play them when you've got Knight of Souls Betrayal in play. It will also use Pestilence, which accomplishes the same goal, but through an activated ability rather than a static effect. It's an enchantment that costs 2 black black, and you can pay black to deal 1 damage to each creature and each player. And at the end of the turn, at the end of any turn, uh, you sacrifice Pestilence if there are no creatures in play. Now our best static creature removal comes at the highest mana costs. Uh, Ethereal Absolution costs 6 mana, a 4 white black. It gives all of our creatures plus 1 plus 1, and all of our opponent's creatures minus 1 minus 1. And we can also pay 2 white black to exile a card from an opponent's graveyard. I love incidental graveyard hate on cards that we want to be playing anyways. And if that exiled card was a creature, you make a 1-1 white and black spirit creature token with flying. Uh, we don't really care about that, but it's nice. And of course, we have to play Alish Narn. Yes, it's $30, but we need it. This is a 7 mana Praetor. It's a 4-7 with Vigilance that gives all other creatures you control plus 2 plus 2, and all creatures your opponents control minus 2 minus 2. So with all of these effects, we can reliably ensure that when we give our opponents Inkling Creature tokens with Shadrix, they won't live long enough to be useful to them in any way whatsoever. But we want to do more than just cancel the downside of giving things to our opponents. We want to win the game when our opponent's creatures die. Let's talk about how we're going to do that. So if we're going to be giving our opponents 2-1 flying creature tokens like the generous player that we are, we want to make sure that they pay for it. Blood Artist and Falcon Wrath Noble have, whenever another creature dies, target player loses one life, and you gain one life. These are classic aristocrat cards that ping an opponent whenever another creature dies. But we have to be really specific here. We can't use cards like Zulaport Cutthroat because Zulaport Cutthroat only triggers when another creature you control dies, so we won't get a life drain effect when an opponent's creature dies. In fact, Blood Artist and Falconrath Noble are the only ones that trigger when our opponent's creatures die. But there are other ways to make our opponents suffer when their creatures die. A Dingus Staff is a 4 mana artifact that says whenever a creature dies, Dingus Staff deals 2 damage to that creature's controller. Even when that creature dies as soon as it enters the battlefield. Even if it's a token, like an Inkling token generated when Illness in the Ranks is in play that creature's controller will still take 2 damage from the Dingus Staff. And note that this can technically hurt us as well, but we typically won't have very many creatures. Of course, we'll play Massacre Worm. This is a 6-5 creature that costs 3 black black black. And when it enters the battlefield, creatures your opponent's control get minus 2 minus 2 until end of turn. And whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, that player loses 2 life. So this is really awesome because we can drop it and wipe out a bunch of small creatures and hit our opponents hard out of nowhere. But our most explosive way to take advantage of our opponent's creatures dying has to be Shriveling Rot. This is an instant that costs 2 black black. It says, choose 1. Until end of turn, whenever a creature is dealt damage, destroy it. Or, until end of turn, whenever a creature dies, that creature's controller loses life equal to its toughness. It also has Entwine for 2 and a black, so you can pay an extra 2 and a black when you cast it to get both effects. Now, we don't care much about the first effect. And also notice that Shriveling Rot can't really be used with any of our static effects that reduce creatures' toughness, uh, like Illness in the Ranks. Uh, when a creature with Toughness 1 enters the battlefield and you've got Illness in the Ranks in play, it will die as a state-based action. I think that's how it works anyways there won't be a chance to put Shriveling Rot on the stack before the creature dies. And even if you could, its toughness would be zero, so that creature's controller wouldn't lose any life anyways. So Shriveling Rot doesn't synergize with our toughness-reducing effects. Instead, we'll use Shriveling Rot in combination with, or in response to, a board wipe. Now, this will affect all players. Uh, whenever a creature goes to a graveyard, that creature's controller loses life equal to its toughness. So again, this will affect us, but we're not playing very many creatures, so we can really plan on this hurting our opponents much more than it hurts us. This card can be a bit situational, but it definitely has the opportunity to completely destroy our opponents, so I think it's worth the include. But we don't even have to kill our opponent's creatures to get value from them. A Death Greeter gains us one life whenever a creature enters the battlefield, including under our opponent's control. 
Now, Authority of the Consuls also has this effect, though it only triggers when our opponent's creatures enter the battlefield, in addition to making those creatures enter tapped. Not for only a single white mana. It's also an enchantment, so it's harder to remove than Death Greeter. And Ashes of the Abhorrent does the same. It also says players can't cast spells from graveyards or activate abilities of cards in graveyards. Uh, more of that incidental graveyard hate. Great. And even though this is an Orzhov deck, I don't think we're running a single piece of graveyard recursion. So this uh, graveyard hate effect on Ashes of the Abhorrent uh, will probably hurt our opponents much more than it hurts us. There's also Suture Priest, which drains an opponent for one each time a creature enters the battlefield under their control. And let's talk about Demon of Dark Schemes. This costs three black black black, kind of like Massacre Worm, and when it enters the battlefield, all other creatures get minus two minus two until end of turn, kind of like Massacre Worm, and when another creature dies, you get an energy counter. And you can pay two and a black and four energy counters to put a creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, tapped. Any graveyard. Okay, so I guess we do have one piece of graveyard recursion, but Ashes of the Abhorrent doesn't even stop this ability anyways. So Demon of Dark Schemes will basically let us steal our opponent's creatures from their graveyard. Uh, finally, we need to mention Revel in Riches, because sometimes you just need to tell the whole table, hey, answer this right now or I win. Revel in Riches is a 5 mana enchantment that gives you a treasure token whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 8 or more treasures, you win the game. Honestly, there's not much else to say about this. Revel in Riches is a very popular win condition. It's in over 15,000 decks on EDH Rec right now. That's 6% uh, of all eligible decks. So those are some of the ways that we'll use our opponent's creatures to win the game. But Shadrix can only give out one creature per turn, so if our opponents don't play many creatures, we'll need to find some other ways to be generous. So if our opponents don't play many creatures, then we won't be able to win very quickly by just giving one opponent one creature token per turn with Shadrix. We'll need more ways to give creature tokens to our opponents. We have a few effects to give out tokens slowly but consistently. A Genesis Chamber is a 2 mana artifact that says whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, if Genesis Chamber is untapped, that creature's controller creates a 1-1 colorless mirror artifact creature token. So whenever a player puts a non-token creature into play, they also get a 1-1 creature token. There's Pure Reflection, which is an enchantment that costs two and white. It's one of those old cards that's kind of hard to understand until you read it about six times. It says, whenever a player casts a creature spell, destroy all reflections. Then that player creates an XX white reflection creature token, where X is the mana value of that spell. So basically, whenever a player casts a creature spell, they also make a reflection creature token with power and toughness equal to that creature's mana value and all other reflection creatures are destroyed. So kind of like Genesis Chamber, but Pure Reflection also only lets one creature token that's created with it stay on the battlefield at a time, for the most part. And because it actively destroys reflection tokens whenever a new one is created, it'll also help you get those creature death triggers for your blood artists or whatnot. And then there's Acorn Catapult. This is a very mediocre 4 mana artifact that also costs $6, Probably just because it makes squirrel tokens, and people really, really like squirrels in Magic the Gathering for some reason. You can pay one and tap it to deal one damage to any target, and then that player or that permanence controller makes a 1-1 green squirrel creature token. Combat Calligrapher is a new one from Commander 2021. It's, it's a 3-3 bird cleric that costs 3 and a white. Uh, first, it says Inklings can't attack you or Planeswalkers you control, so that works pretty well with our commander. It also says whenever a player attacks one of your opponents, that attacking player creates a tapped 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying that's attacking that opponent. So this only triggers once per attack, not per attacker. So at most each player will only create one inkling for each player that they attack. Well, at least each player that isn't you. Uh, they won't create one inkling for each creature they attack with. Uh, your opponents can also just kind of turn off Combat Calligrapher by choosing not to attack your opponents, and when that extra Inkling token that's generated will do them more harm than good. 
So I think Combat Calligrapher is easily the worst of our token generators, but I wanted to try it out here. It obviously fits with the theme of the deck. So I think it just barely makes the cut for trial purposes, but in the long run you'll probably want to swap this out for something a little more reliable. Now I do like Benevolent Offering. This is a 4 mana instant that has two effects. A first, choose an opponent. You and that player each create three 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. Next, choose an opponent. You gain two life for each creature you control, and that player gains two life for each creature they control. So you can choose a different opponent for each of these effects. If you have a Dingus Staff in play, and maybe that uh, Illness in the ranks, then Benevolent Offering will essentially do 6 damage to the one opponent uh, when they make those three 1-1 one, one spirits. And then you can pick a different opponent, uh, preferably one with no creatures, uh, to gain life equal to the number of creatures they control. We'll also use Alliance of Arms. I really like this one. This is a sorcery that costs a single white mana, but not really. Uh, it has joined forces. Starting with you, each player may pay any amount of mana. Then each player creates X 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens, where X is the total amount of mana paid this way. So, worst case scenario, you pay X plus the 1 white, and your opponents pay nothing, and each player gets X 1-1 one, one creature tokens. Ideally, all of your opponent's creatures die instantly to one of your enchantments like Illness in the Ranks, and then they all lose 2 times X life to something like Dingus Staff or Massacre Worm. Because, well, if that wasn't going to happen, then why did you cast this? But Alliance of Arms can also be so much better than this. Let's say one of your opponents is playing a life gain deck and they have a bunch of life. Or maybe they can prevent the damage to themselves from your Dingus Staff. Or maybe they just really want to hit another opponent hard and they're willing to make some sacrifices to do so. That opponent might actually pay mana into Alliance of Arms to help it do even more damage to your other opponents. So this card can do a bunch of damage for the rate of the, the mana that you put into it. We'll also play annoying cards like Awaken the Erstwhile. This is a 5 mana fun sucking sorcery that has each player discard their hand. No it's not a wheel effect, no one gets to draw more cards to replace them, everyone just discards their hand. Then each player creates a 2-2 zombie token for each card they discarded this way. At least our commander will help us refill our hand a little bit faster. Now I also want to talk about another really old, obscure card in Infernal Genesis. This is a 6 mana enchantment, and no, it really doesn't need to cost this much for what it does. It says, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player mills a card. Then they create X 1-1 one, one black minion creature tokens, where X is the milled card's mana value. So this will create some randomish number of tokens for each player at the beginning of their turn. Now they might reveal a land and make zero tokens, they might reveal the swords to plowshares and make one token, they might reveal an expropriate and make nine tokens. So this is okay, but it's not super reliable. But our most exciting token generator has to be Tombstone Stairwell. This is a more modestly costed 4 mana enchantment, uh, but do note that it's also nearly $20 and it's on the reserved list. But I think it's definitely worth it for this deck. Tombstone Stairwell has cumulative upkeep, one and a black, so that's kind of a lot. But it also has, at the beginning of each upkeep, if Tombstone Stairwell is on the battlefield, each player creates a 2-2 black zombie creature token with haste named Tomb Spawn for each creature card in their graveyard. At the beginning of each end step, or when Tombstone leaves the battlefield, destroy all tokens created with Tombstone Stairwell. They can't be regenerated. So this is another one of those old cards that I needed to read a few times to get exactly what it does. So this triggers for each player on each upkeep, and it gives that player a number of creature tokens equal to the number of cards in that player's graveyard. So let's say I cast this on my turn, then I pass the turn to, I don't know, Teferi. Now, you should never play commander against Teferi if you like fun, but well, here we are. Anyways, let's say Teferi has four creature cards in his graveyard. He'll make four creature tokens from Tombstone Stairwell. Uh, Teferi takes his turn, then passes to Nyssa. Now during Nyssa's upkeep, Teferi still has four creature cards in his graveyard, so he makes four more creature tokens. Now Nyssa passes to uh, Kevin, and Teferi makes four more creature tokens. Then Kevin passes the turn back to me, and again, Teferi makes four more creature tokens during my upkeep. So in one round of the table, Teferi made 16 creature tokens. 
and every other player does this too. Now this applies to us as well, but again we don't have many creatures in our deck so this likely won't hurt us much. And those creatures that Tombstone Stairwell creates are destroyed at the end of each turn that they're created. Which is great because we love those creatures to die when we have Dingus Staff or Blood Artist or Massacre Worm. So Tombstone Stairwell fits exactly what this deck wants to be doing. When we have our static creature killing and our draining effect set up, a Tombstone Stairwell will absolutely kill our opponents very, very quickly. So we've gone over our primary win condition. Uh, we're going to kill our opponent's creatures, and we'll punish our opponents when those creatures die. And we'll use effects like our commander to give them more creatures to trigger those punishing effects. Now let's go over some of the supporting cards in the deck. First I want to talk about alternative win conditions. We're mostly focused on the creature kill plan, but we shouldn't forget that Shadrix is a flying double striker that can give himself plus one plus one counters. It might be possible to get in for a commander damage win if we really need to, even if it's not our main focus. Blade of the Blood Chief is an equipment that costs one, it equips for one, and gives the equipped creature a plus one plus one counter whenever another creature dies. I put this on Shadrix, and with all the creatures that we kill, he'll get really big really fast. Blackblade Reforged makes Shadrix big instantly and with almost no effort. It costs 2, it equips for 3 onto a legendary creature, and it gives the equipped creature plus 1 plus 1 for each land you control. If you have at least 9 lands, then Shadrix will instantly be in 1 hit KO range for commander damage. I'm also using Ring of Zathrid. This one's a little bit more obscure, it costs 2, it equips for 1, and it gives the equipped creature a plus 1 plus 1 counter during your upkeep if the equipped creature is black. So this can make Shedrix bigger, but it's very slow. But it also has Pay 2 Regenerate the Equipped Creature, so it helps give Shadrix some resilience. We'll also give Shadrix some protection with Cloak and Dagger. But think of this as a really bad Lightning Greaves. It's an equipment that costs 2, equips for 3, and gives the equipped creature plus 2 plus 0 and Shroud. Now I picked Cloak and Dagger both because of the Shroud to help protect Shadrix, and because we really need to boost Shadrix's power if we want to be able to get in for commander damage when we need it. So Cloak and Dagger alone boosts Shadrix up to 4 power, so he'll deal 8 damage in combat. And if we really need to focus on commander damage, again we can use Shadrix's triggered ability to give him a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of our uh, beginning of our combat phase instead of drawing a card. Now as long as we want to protect Shadrix, I really like Valorous Stance. This is an instant for one and a white, and you get to pick one. Destroy a target creature with toughness four or greater, or target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. There's also Dawn Charm. This is a great modal spell that can protect Shadrix. Uh, it's another two mana instant that lets you pick to either uh, Fog, prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn, or regenerate target creature, or counter target spell that targets you. Now when it comes to mana ramp, we'll play a lot of the basics. Uh, you can see the deck list in the description, but I won't go over the normal boring ramp pieces here. I will mention Dousing Dagger. Uh, this equipment costs 2, and when it enters the battlefield, target opponent creates two zero two 2 plant creature tokens with Defender, which is exactly what we want to do. Uh, the equipped creature gets plus 2 plus 1, and when it deals combat damage to an opponent, Dousing Dagger transforms into Lost Veil, vale, which taps for 3 mana of any one color. Nice. But of course we'll also need Black Market. Uh, it's expensive at 5 mana, but very very worth it. Uh, this enchantment gets a charge counter whenever a creature dies, any creature, doesn't matter who's you know who the controller is. And at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase you add a black mana for each charge counter on it. This is practically infinite mana, uh, sure, it's only black mana, but 65% of this deck is black, so that's perfectly fine. Now, for removal, we want to make sure that all of the creatures die, uh, except for our commander, uh, because our commander helps keep cards in our hand, and we don't really have many other creatures to worry about. So we'll play Tragic Arrogance. It says for each player, you choose from among the permanents that player controls, uh, an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker, then each player sacrifices all other non-land permanents they control. Now we do have 14 enchantments and 16 artifacts in this deck, so, so we do need to be careful about not overcommitting these to the board before we cast this. 
Uh, we'll of course also play Crux of Fate, which is a 5 mana sorcery that lets you destroy all dragon creatures or destroy all non-dragon creatures, which is exactly what we want to do. There's other removal, of course. I've tried to pick the most versatile single target removal that doesn't cost too much mana, but I've also tried to prioritize creature removal as well, uh, since that fits our theme and our win condition. Uh, but again, you can see the deck list for all of the details here. Now for card draw, the only piece I want to mention specifically is Species Specialist. This is a 2-3 creature that costs 2 black black. When it enters the battlefield, you pick a creature type, and when a creature of that type dies, you draw a card. So you'll probably pick Inkling, and then you'll draw two cards at the beginning of combat on your turn when you've got Shadrix and a static debuffing effect like Illness in the Ranks in play. Now as far as lands are concerned, we'll run the most fitting MDFCs from Zendikar Rising. Uh, Sejiri Shelter and Malakir Rebirth can help us protect Shadrix. Uh, Undo Inversion is another board wipe. Hagra Mauling is more creature removal. I'm also running Tyrite Sanctum, which costs a bunch of time and mana to do what it does, but it can boost Shadrix's power, and you can even sacrifice it to make him indestructible. Uh, so you can pay 2 and tap it to give a legendary creature a plus 1 plus 1 counter and make it a god, and you can also pay 4 and tap it and sacrifice it to put an indestructible counter on target god. Uh, finally, we'll use Vault of the Archangel, because giving Shadrix Death Touch to go with his double strike is pretty nice. So that's Shadrix Hates Life. Now let's go over the deck stats and cost. Our Shadrix deck has an average CMC of 3.01. We have 36 lands and 11 creatures, not counting the commander. We have 9 effects that statically reduce the toughness of creatures, like Illness in the Ranks, or at least kill them repeatedly, like Pestilence, so that when we give creatures tokens to our opponents, they won't have much opportunity to take advantage of them. We have 11 payoff cards that either reward us or punish our opponents when our opponents get creatures or when their creatures die. We have 9 cards that give creature tokens to our opponents, uh, again not counting our commander, this deck has 10 sources of ramp and 5 sources of card draw. Now that card draw number seems a bit low, but we're primarily relying on our commander to help us out here. Uh, we have 10 single target removal spells and 4 to 5 board wipes. At the time of this recording, the deck cost is $203.61 on tcgplayer.com. Now there's a couple of cards here that cost $20 to $30 and take up a pretty good portion of that budget. And there's a few others that are between $5 and $10 that are good cards, but aren't really needed to make the deck function. So let's talk about some possible budget replacements. Uh, first, there's Elish Norn. Again, this is $30, and there is no real replacement for this card, but there are plenty of other cards that have similar effects, even though they're objectively much, much weaker. A Pestilence Demon is under $1. It shares the same mana value as Elish Norn, it's also a big creature, and it's also basically Pestilence on a body. There's also Dread of Night, which is ridiculously cheap at 1 mana and also under a dollar. It gives all white creatures minus 1, minus 1. This is basically only going to kill Inklings, and maybe it'll punish another white token deck if you're playing against one. But even though it's a bit narrow, it is really efficient. Finally, there is Kervek the Spiteful. Now this is the most pissed guy I have ever seen. When someone casts Kervik the Merciless, everyone gets scared. But Kervik the Spiteful? This guy only has 37 decks on edhrec.com. He's a 4 mana 3-2 that gives all other creatures minus 1 minus 1, and that's it. He probably thinks that we're including him in our deck out of pity. And he's right. But, well, he does what we want, and if we can't afford Elishnorn, then at least Karvik the Spiteful has the right words in his text box, even if you'll never be excited to cast him. Okay, next we need to mention Anguished Unmaking. I wanted as many creature removal spells as possible, since we get value when our opponent's creatures die, though I guess Anguished Unmaking doesn't actually kill them, it exiles them, but anyways. Uh, it's also nice to clear blockers out of the way so we can attack with Shadrix, but the best removal is also versatile, so we can hit both creatures and other permanents. Anguished Unmaking is basically the best single target removal spell in Commander, I think. 
Uh, it's also $10, so substitute it for anything else if you're on a budget. You're in Orzhov colors, so you have plenty of options. There's also Vault of the Archangel. Again, this helps Shadrix in combat because Death Touch plus Double Strike is nice. But it's also $9 and it doesn't really help us at all with our main game plan, so take it out if you want to save money. Now let's talk about Tombstone Stairwell. This is possibly our most explosive and our most sustainable creature token generator. It's also $20. Again, it's on the reserved list, so that price will only ever go up. You could swap it for Curse of Disturbance, which is less than a dollar, and it gives out zombie creature tokens whenever someone attacks the cursed player. There's also Clackbridge Troll. This is a single use effect, but it sort of kills creatures too, sort of. It's a 5 mana 8 8 with Trample and Haste, and when it enters the battlefield, a target opponent creates three 0 1 white goat creature tokens, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. If a player does, you tap Clackbridge Troll, you gain three life, and you draw a card. Now, I probably like this card too much, but it can sort of give us extra card draw or kill creatures, even though our opponents get to make that choice, which isn't great. But it does create tokens technically, so you could consider it. And finally, we're using Black Sun Zenith. This is X Black Black for a sorcery that lets you put X minus one minus one counters on each creature. Then you shuffle Black Sun Zenith back into its owner's library. Now this is $7, and it's nice because we can kill off all those tokens while keeping Shadrix on the battlefield. But there's much, much cheaper, at least on your wallet, uh, if less exact ways to do this too. Uh, Mutilate is $1.50, and it gives all creatures minus one minus one until end of turn for each swamp you control and there are 17 swamps in this deck. There's also plenty of other mini board wipes like Yeheni's Expertise or Cry of the Carnarium. Again, these are just examples, but there are plenty of these small black board wipes that will kill all the tokens without touching Shadrix. All right, so that is Shadrix Silver Quill. I really like having card draw on an Orzhov commander, but with Shadrix's modal ability trigger, there's also several ways that you can build around him. But again, I think if you really want to take advantage of what Shadrix does, you'll need to find a way to benefit from whatever mode you pick for one of your opponents. Anyways, check back soon. I'll have a deck tech for Octavia, Living Thesis, from Commander 2021. And I'm still working on several builds for Cody Vociferous Codex. This is a pretty tough one to build around, but I think there's actually a ton of directions you can go with Cody. I'm currently planning on doing a large... A deep dive deck tech video for Cody, and I'm hoping to have at least three deck techs in that single video, but it's going to take a little more time to get that together. And I'm also working on a few more Strixhaven and Commander 2021 deck techs, but I haven't decided yet which ones I want to turn into videos. But that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching.